opacity masks. With opacity masking, we need to take a break from thinking about layers for a minute and go back to thinking about objects. The way objects are masked with regular clipping masks that don't have to be tied to one layer. With opacity masks, we start with a masking shape on top and an object or objects to be masked underneath. But with opacity masks, the masking shape is used to adjust the level of opacity in the object being masked below. Which is why I have this phrase here, white shows and black hides, to describe how opacity masks work. And gradients can play a big part here, so I have my gradients panel, my transparency panel, and my layers panel out. So here's an example of a common use for opacity masking in Illustrator, to make a reflection for type like this. So I'll turn my demonstration layer off and I'll turn on a layer that has some plain type in solid purple, and I use the reflect tool to reflect it below my original type. And then the black type here above is on another layer, and it's locked, so I can't accidentally select it. So with my purple reflected type layer highlighted, I'll draw a masking shape here over the type. And this rectangle has a black and white linear gradient rotated a negative 90 degrees so it travels from white at the top to black at the bottom. And I'm going to use this gradient rectangle as my opacity masking shape. So opacity masks really have the most power when you use them with something that has varying levels of black and white. Because like this says, white shows and black hides. So when I use this gradient shape here as an opacity mask, everything in white will show and be 100% opaque. Everything in black will hide and be 0% opacity, completely clear, completely transparent. And the gray tones in the middle will result in varying opacity percentages. And so if I drag to marquee select here, I'm getting both the gradient rectangle and the upside down type underneath the rectangle. So they're both selected, and now I'll go up to the transparency panel. And so if you've been wondering what goes on in this area of the panel here, well, this is what it's about, opacity masking. So to create an opacity mask for my two selected shapes, go to the panel options menu here in the corner of the transparency panel and choose make opacity mask. And now there's some gradation happening in our type, but it's still pretty subtle. So I need to adjust that gradient. And before I do that, just notice in the layers panel what this newly masked type object looks like. There's a dotted line beneath the name, so that's indicating an opacity mask. Regular clipping paths that we've seen in the layers panel are underlined. Opacity masks have this dotted underline. And in the transparency panel here, I have two thumbnails. We're used to seeing the one on the left. It's the selected object. In this case, it's the object being masked, the type. On the right is a thumbnail of the masking shape, the narrow gradient rectangle. Selecting the thumbnail tells Illustrator which part of this opacity mask you want to edit. And these two things are linked together by default, as this icon here is telling us, so they move together as a unit now, like the original clipping masks we did this week. Okay, I'll undo that, and I'm used to that behavior, so I don't usually like to unlink them here, but you can if you need to. So right now, as this black outline indicates, the mask contents are active. I want to edit the gradient, so I'll click the thumbnail on the right. Now the outline of my mask is highlighted on the artboard, and the gradient fill is active on the gradient panel. And I want more hiding and less showing, so I'll slide the midpoint closer to white so the gradient has more black in it overall. Black hides. And notice that because I have this mask thumbnail selected, my Layers panel has changed to show only the opacity mask. When I click the left thumbnail again, the Layers panel is back to normal and my type is selected and available for me to edit. Now I'll turn on this layer in the background so you can see that this type is actually transparent. One reason I'm showing you this feature is because opacity masking is actually what those who are using CS3 and earlier versions of Illustrator need to do to make transparent gradients in Illustrator. This was the method before transparent gradients were introduced in CS4. So those of us in CS4 and CS5 already have additional ways of making transparent gradient type like this. But we've also been working with patterns in this class. And I'm going to turn on this top layer here. And if you want a transparently gradating pattern fill, and who doesn't really, you can use opacity masking for that. So I already have a gradient rectangle here above my pattern, 
and I'll select them using the Layers panel to click the target and then shift click to click the other target. So now both objects are selected. And I'll go to the Transparency panel options and choose Make Opacity Mask. Now one last thing about the panel here. The checkboxes here are for clip. Do you want this rectangle, the gradient rectangle, to also become a clipping path and crop the object too? Then you check this. In this case it doesn't really have an effect here because I made my mask larger than my pattern. The invert checkbox just flips the black and white values in the mask. And finally, to release, the command is back in the Transparency Panel Options menu. So that's opacity masking. Meet me in the next lesson and we'll start putting this and more to use in a project.